since the inception of this channel, the number one comment, like by far, is how to do backside 360s. And I don't really have backside 360s. I've never had that trick. You know, it's just been one of those tricks that like, no matter how hard I try it, I can't do it. I either do a terrible, like ugly pivot, or when I whip it around, I'm totally off balance and I slip out every time. So for the past six months, every single time that I've been skating, I've been like really trying to work on them a little bit and I've kind of ran into the same problems that I've always had. I can't quite get it. But the other day I was working and I actually ended up in Manhattan Beach and I checked out the Manhattan Beach skate park because you just have been able to skate it. It was like closed off because of the illness. So like you couldn't skate it, but I kind of had a session and I was really just relaxed, just hanging out and I got two of them. I got two perfect backside 360s. So I think today's the day. I think we're gonna lock them down. And I usually skate Westchester, as many of you know. I usually go there really early, but at this time it gets pretty packed. So I'm gonna go to Stoner and try to get the trick. There's a little spot that I think I can like hide my camera under the ledge because they have this big flat ground area. So let's go warm up and try to get the back three. Damn, there's low key kind of like a lot of people here. All right, so this trick is really weird because the first step is you need to like have your body ahead of the 180, right? So you twist your shoulders and when you pop, you should be slightly ahead of the 180. Now the problem is, is you whip it and you get all off balance. So you gotta focus on scooping, but you kind of scoop down and the timing is like, it has to be perfect because if you are like with the board, you don't get it around. If you go too far ahead of the board, you get it around, but you're off balance. So you have to be just slightly ahead of your lower body when you pop and like looking the other way. So that's like the, the hard part about this trick. Oh my God, this trick makes you so dizzy. I was getting closer before I started filming. I'm so dizzy. <laughs> so I just looked at what I was doing. So when I, when I do the back three, I'm tilting. So I'm jumping to the left when I just need to jump straight up. And I know when I was trying this last time, like that was the problem, but you know, you seem to forget because you think you can't make it around. I think I need to focus on twisting more and timing the pop and not like just throwing it like a snowboard, you know? And I noticed I kept landing and slipping, so I gotta look a little bit ahead and focus on jumping up and twisting. And I think I'll get it.
Oh, so the more I try it, the farther away I get. This seems to happen a lot, like I'll land tricks like super casual without trying. And then once I start trying it, I just like lose all of it. And I think it's just like how your subconscious just kind of like knows what to do. And then when you overthink it, you just get farther away. But we're like stubborn, so I'm just gonna keep trying it. I tried the trick for like an hour and a half. When I first started trying it, I was getting really, really close. And I got a few of them where I did the full rotation. But every time I would land, I'd be completely off balance. And then when I started doing slow motion, I started to look at the footage and you could tell that when I was getting that really good scoop and rotation, I was leaning on my toes and getting such off rotation in the air that every time I came around, I'd be so off balance. So I started to try to jump up and spin like a top and that helped me stay on top of my feet. But then I could never get that like really good scooping popping motion. And I did a bunch of just like terrible back threes where I pretty much pivoted the whole thing. And it's so frustrating. So those first few tries out of the gate felt really good when i did them they felt perfect but then i looked at the footage and like too much pivot you know it seems like i need to just suck my legs up more that's it, it just suck my legs up this trick is so frustrating like over the course of trying this trick I feel like I've landed a couple good ones and every time I do it, like I do it kind of differently. It's like, I don't even know what to think. It's like, when I think about doing it this way, it kind of works and then I might get lucky, but like, there's no consistency. Like, I kind of don't know what to do. I'm just gonna try to not think and just see if I can get one. Like, the way I'm doing it now is so much different than the last session. The last session I was really like scooping and floating and it looked more like a backside three, but I landed all jacked up like real bad these ones i feel like i can do them now but it's like too much pivot so it's like i'm trying to go in between but when i go in between it's just like my brain malfunctions
I thought I was figuring it out, but this trick's a freaking body melter. Like everything that I thought I figured out, I didn't figure out. Like, I think that the reason this trick is so hard to learn is because right when I started trying it, I felt pretty good. It's like my body remembered the last session. Cause at the end of the, or in the middle of the last time I tried it, I landed an okay one and I landed a few okay ones here, but like I didn't have the trick. And I think it's because you get so dizzy, it just like messes with your like nervous system and your subconscious and you just like start to figure out what you're doing and then you get so dizzy, your body's like, I don't know what to do. Like, I, I don't know what to do. I'm gonna have to come back for round three on this one. Cause even though I did a few, like I can't explain the trick they weren't the best, so. Ugh. It. That one was like proper, proper. I felt, I felt the like the little tweak where it like sucked up. And So this trick, I think I tried filming it like five times for like an hour or so each time. And man, this trick's hard. Like I, I've, I've really struggled with back threes like my whole life. I've tried them, can't do them. And like some tricks are just harder for some people, you know, like I can do tricks that some people that can back three can't do. And like, that's kind of the cool thing about skateboarding is like everybody's body moves differently. So certain things are gonna be harder for you. And for me, back three is really hard. So it took about five times filming. I probably skated for about an hour or two each time. And the one thing I'll say is like, don't get frustrated because this trick within 10 minutes, you get so dizzy. And I noticed every time I tried it, I got the closest the first 10 to 20 minutes. And then I started to mess up because your equilibrium gets thrown off. So I think the best way to learn this trick is like, just try it five to 10 minutes every session and then move on, you know? And I think over time you'll figure it out. But what I noticed with this trick, like the secret is like, you can't really get too ahead of yourself. I watched some other trick tips and they said that like, you wanna have your body spinning ahead of the, the back 180. Now, I think that that is kind of true, but 
The problem is, at least with me, is when I was winding up, I would get way like ahead and I'd be looking around the back as I was popping and it would actually throw me off. And I noticed that when I kind of wound up just a little bit and when I popped, if I kept my shoulders with my lower body, it really helped me because I would throw my shoulders ahead and as I'd come around, I'd be all top heavy and I'd fall over and I'd like lose my balance every single time. So I think the first thing that you have to do is as you're ready to set up, you want to wind up, but right when you throw it, you only want to have your shoulders ahead of your body just a little bit. You want to keep everything nice and tight as you're throwing the backside 360. The other thing that's super important that I noticed is like, when I'm getting ready, right, all of my weight is like centered above my back foot, right? So I'm kind of back loaded, right? Like I'm loaded up on this back foot and I wind up and I throw it. The next thing is like your foot setup. I don't know if you can tell in the clips, but you're pretty much set up like a 360 foot. You wanna be like your back foot right in this pocket, but you don't wanna have it too much in the pocket. You wanna have it like a little bit more up on the tail. So like kind of in between 360 flip and like, I mean, I don't really even know how you put your, cause with the kickflip it's on the other side, but I guess like a three flip, but a little bit more like cinched up on the tail so you can get like a pop. And another thing about this trick, and I think this is huge is like, if you just pop it and throw it, your, your tail kind of sticks on the ground, right? And you don't get it around. But if you really do kind of like a sliding scoop around, like a big spin or like, just like scooping on the pocket, just slapping that foot, like slapping and sliding that foot around, you spin real quick, but you don't really get that like kind of sucked up proper back three. So this trick is like a balance between popping and scooping. Pop too much, you kind of stick on the ground, your shoulders get ahead of you and the board kind of stalls out at 180. But if you just lay into it too much with that toe and slide it around, you get spinning, but you don't get any elevation and it just looks terrible. So you wanna find that balance of like scooping it right kind of at 180, you snap it off the ground and you really have to suck your legs up. Sucking your legs up is like kind of more important than throwing your shoulders too hard, okay? So you're like all lined up on this back leg, your foot's in like three foot position with the back foot a little bit higher. You wind up a little bit, you don't get too far ahead and you really try to scoop and pop at the same time. Now this last little part is what helped me land it. Cause once I got the pop and the scoop figured out in my shoulders, I wasn't too far ahead. I would come around and I would land with my hands all over here and it would throw me off balance. So the first thing is when you throw your shoulders and you kind of get that scoop popping motion, your head doesn't necessarily want to twist around to like hurry up the 360. You almost want to like look under your arm, right? So your head starts to dip under your arm and you kind of just try to look at your back foot. Like your eyes kind of follow your heel around, all right? And that's gonna keep your neck and your shoulders just slightly ahead of your body. Because if you just twist around like this, which I think other trick tips, they say that, you are all off balance when you come around. Like it's bad, okay? And the last time I tried it, and then right before I landed it, this is where I was at. And I was kind of doing them, but it felt a little bit weird. And then I was really just kind of messing around. And I was like, man, like ballerinas, they, are, they start like this, and then they bring their hands in, and then they spin quicker. And I noticed I was off balance, and I couldn't quite get the last little bit of the 360 around. So just for like shits and giggles, and I'm gonna show the clip, like it's very exaggerated. I wind up, I'm on my back foot, I throw it around, I scoop and I'm looking at that heel. And then right as I come around 180, I just pull my hands in like this and it just whips you around. Like it is so weird. I know that that centrifugal force thing will, will make you spin faster, but it like really helped. It's almost like my rotation sped up in the air and I just come around and, I, and I'll pause the clip. I'm like, what? Oh my God, that was it. I just went like this. I had no like wobble at the end. I think that's it, bro. And I know it looks dorky, like that's exaggerated, right? I like wind up, scoop pop, and then as I'm coming around, I go like this. It's super dumb looking. But then I was like, that makes so much sense. Like if you throw and your, sh your shoulders are out here and you come around, you're gonna kind of slow your rotation. And when you land, like this is gonna throw your balance off. But if you're coming around 270 
and you bring your hands in, your, your centrifugal force is gonna speed up, but also it's gonna balance you. So you can just er, the last bit of the 360. And then I started thinking about like, who does the, some of the best back threes? Like, well, we got Tyson Bowerbank, we got Tor Pudwell, Chris Cole. And I remember Chris Cole, he really opens his arms up, right? Kind of looks down under, does the 360. And then I noticed as he's coming around, I mean, he doesn't go like this because that looks dumb. But his arms, instead of going around like this, he goes like this. He kind of, this one goes behind and this one goes to the front. And he comes around like this. So it's like, let me try that. Let me try to wind up, throw it, scoop, pop, come around. And then as my arms are flowing, let me bring them in like this. And it'll actually look kind of cool. Watch this last clip. This is the best one I did. I throw it around, I bring my arms in, and it felt so good. It was almost full rotation. I think that that was like 345 degrees. It was pretty much a perfect back three. And my arms came in and it just felt good. So I think that's it. That's the game changer. Like, don't try to throw it too hard in the beginning. Load up your back foot. Your back foot has to be kind of in trayful position. You throw it, you look down at your back heel, and you really have to get that perfect like balance between a scoop and a pop. Remember, if you scoop it too hard, it's gonna look stupid. If you pop it too much, it's gonna stick on the ground. You're not gonna get the foot rotation. So you put that pressure, you start scooping, you snap it off the ground, you twist. And as you're coming around, you wanna pull your arms in. And that, my friends, is the back three. I kind of had like a chip on my shoulder. Some dude commented like, you don't got back threes. Well, I got back threes and I hope that you guys get back threes too. Um, sorry, it took me so long to upload a video. Like I was kind of getting annoyed. Like I really wanted to do back three. And I know there's a bunch of other tricks that I'm trying to get to, but I tried this. I kind of tweaked my back and then it rained for like two weeks. And then for the past two weeks, I've been busy, but I've been trying to film this trick. So every time I go skate, I've been trying to get it because like, I do think that this is the number one most requested trick on my channel. I really think that there's more people that have asked for back three. So I showed you my process. Like it took me five different times to learn it. Five to 10 hours of time of, of actual time trying. And I've been skating like over 20 years. So it just goes to show like you got to put work in for skateboarding. But if you really just break down the movements, like you need to relax and just think like, is my weight too far forward or backward? Am I scooping? Am I popping right? Are my shoulders right? Is my neck right? Are my eyes looking in the right spot? How are my arms? Am I sucking my legs up enough? This is what you got to do when you're learning tricks because skateboarding is just physics, you know? And it's like understanding the physics of a trick and then making your body do it. I mean, that's why I like skating. That's why after 20 years, it's still really fun. So I'll see you guys on the next one. Hit the subscribe button. Peace, love, bye.